All right, Sean Lennon here with the Fightly Report. I'm in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Stand next to me, UFC welterweight Zach Otto. Zach is, of course, going to be fighting Sage Northcutt. UFC Boise, Idaho. Make sure to check it out on July 14th. Zach, again, pleasure to have you on the show and a pleasure to be here. And yeah. you're to BJJ. Tell us about the school and the history of it. Uh, so, let's see, Jake originally uh, had a different partner when he took over the school from our instructor all the way back in 2010. Um, school that only had blue belts now as the owner back in 2010 in an area in Milwaukee that obviously uh, a lot of good jiu-jitsu, some black belts running schools, uh, Rufus Sport was in Milwaukee really gaining a lot of steam. So uh, it was tough to start opening up a gym with only those credentials. Um, I ended up buying into the business, becoming a partner with, with Jake. So 50-50, we've been running it since early 2000, uh, 2012 together. And uh, just growing the team. And uh, we do teach classes for UW Milwaukee, which uh, really helps us bring new people in and give these college kids a, a chance to get exposed to martial arts. Um, but also gain a credit through through UW Milwaukee, so um, that's helped you know grow the gym as well. And we've just been bringing on great coaches along the way, striking coaches, wrestling coaches that have helped us develop this program into an extremely elite program. Excellent, man! Hey, congratulations on the hard work. It's finally paying off. Of course, you're competing in the UFC now. Uh, your last fight, man. Talk about it, Mike Pyle. It was his uh, last fight ever, and you caught him really well. Uh, did you feel like that was one of your better performances moving forward? Yeah, not only a, a better performance just because of the finish, but because of the pressure too. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some times in my sports career, and even, even in life, where it comes down to a point where I need to perform, otherwise it's not going to go the way I, I, I want it to go. So um, again, I, I came up when the pressure was on and I was able to get the finish and and secure my job when it was most needed. So uh, just gives me confidence moving forward that when I need a win, I can get a win. Definitely, and talk about receiving your black belt from Henry, your longtime teacher. Uh, that was that a surprise for you when he came in the octagon with that? Yeah, for sure. I didn't even know he was coming on the trip. Okay. Uh, Jake kind of surprised me with that one at the last second, which was a really cool surprise. I still didn't even think that I'd be potentially getting my black belt or anything like that. Um, I have, had, I did have my brown belt for like three years. Um, I knew I was going to be probably testing for it at the next seminar, but mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to get tied around my waist at all, like in the cage. So that was a really cool experience. Uh, Henry was obviously uh, a main mentor for me. He was the my instructor when I started my my martial arts journey. So uh, very cool for him to be there, and obviously very cool to receive that black belt. And talk about your journey in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, starting from your humble beginnings, coming into this gym, and where you're at now. And just talk about like the process of becoming a black belt. How long did it take you? Yeah, about nine years. Um, and I was never really that hobbyist that just came twice a week. And um, I pretty much from the time I started training, lived, breathed Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, it wasn't until after uh, doing jiu-jitsu for six months or so that I, I even started taking any kickboxing classes. So I was really focused on the gi when I first started and, and using my background in wrestling to mix my, my whole grappling together. And then I started with kickboxing and everything kind of clicked. So that led me into MMA. Now talk about your opponent, Steve Northcutt, coming up. Tough guy. Uh, you know, he's, he's actually going to be looking for this win as well. He's coming off a big loss. Talk about, like, you know, what you expect from him. What's the challenges he brings? A younger guy, you know, he's very athletic. And yeah, yeah, too. yeah. He's a, uh, you know, good athletic kid. Uh, been around martial arts for a while. He's on a little win streak here, but I feel like those were down at 155 against bottom of the roster guys, and uh, he's coming up to 170 to fight a legit 170 for the first time in the UFC. And uh, I plan on putting a, a beating on him. So I'm not only am I going to get this win, but I'm going to get the finish too. Nothing personal between you guys, it's just business, but the fact that you said that he kind of like something th throws you off about him, right? Yeah, um, he's just a little too nice. I don't know if he's as genuine as people think he is. Um, I don't really care. I'm just going to go in there and, and uh, he's trying to take food off my table, so it's not going to happen. And talk about like the rivalry, man, because you did mention Rupert Sport earlier. He's in training Rupert Sport. Is there kind of some kind of rivalry that exists between you guys? 
Uh, I know he only trained over there for a little while, okay. so he's been over at Team Alpha Male for for a right. bit now, and he's kind of got a home over there. Um, don't have anything against Team Alpha Male guys or anything like that. Um, not like any big rivalry. It's just uh, I think it's a little too early, too soon for this guy, and uh, I'm looking to move up the ladder here. Talk about how sweet a submission victory would be to put all your Zoom Jiu Jitsu and make it flow right into that octagon and be able to obtain that first time UFC. Yeah, I, I do have a lot of submissions on my record. Mm -hmm. uh, I think double digit, I think I've reached 10 submission pro submissions. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again just because of the difference in skill sets when it, when it hits the mat, but I'll be comfortable however it ends. Um, and I just know that it will end. So referee will definitely have to do his job that night. His life will be in my hands. Got about finally fighting in the U.S. once again. You know, your last fight was in Vegas, and you had to fight overseas several times for the UFC. Uh, talk about having the opportunity to fight in Vegas, and also the opportunity to fight in Lincoln. Yeah, I was traveling around, taking some fights on short notice against either UFC guys with a lot of experience or winning records. And uh, now it's kind of my time. I've been getting some full training camps, been fighting in the States. It's been nice. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity for me to gain some more fans and get on a win streak in the UFC. I'll correct myself. Boise, Idaho for the first time. Yep, Boise, the Idaho. UFC. Yep, I've actually never been to Idaho. I've been to a lot of states. Uh, luckily, I had a, a great dad that kind of took me around a lot of places when I was a kid, but I've never been to Idaho. So excited to go over there and see what it's like. Now talk about uh, Milwaukee, you said MMA has a you know, plethora of different fighters, gyms, and UFC. You would like to, for them to come, of course. It's the 150th year of the Harley Davidson. So talk about like how UFC could bring an event here. Yeah, uh, we have obviously a lot of people that are training out of Milwaukee, fighting at a high level, fighting in the UFC. We have a brand new arena that I just got a tour of the other day that's going to be opening up and having their first events here, I think, in September. So, um, brand new arena, tons of UFC fighters in Milwaukee. It makes sense to me. Sergio's, he just won a, a big fight. So let's give him a title shot. Let's make me the co-main event, whatever. Let's do it. Yeah, that'd be amazing for uh, Milwaukee. Cause it's been a while since I've had a UFC. It has been. And uh, I think, you know, Milwaukee can really show well uh, with, with this new arena and with the right marketing, which the UFC has. How about after a long training camp, what are you using for recovery? Uh, I do take Advocare supplements. Uh, I'm not a big supplement person, but it does help with keeping my joints and all that help. You know, usually if as soon as I start cleaning up my diet, my inflammation really, really goes down. So usually when I start training camp, now that I'm 31 years old, I kind of like, oh my God, my elbow hurts, my knee hurts and stuff like that. Um, and what's it, what's it going to be like by the end of training camp if it already feels like this? But as soon as I start cleaning up my diet, I, I really, luckily, uh, knock on wood, have not had any uh, nagging or too many serious injuries with all the contact sports I've played my whole life. So for you, it's all about training smart. Tell us the advice that you have to give other fighters about training smart. Yeah, um, it is a fine line. We're still trying to figure that out. MMA is still in its infancy. Um, I think it is important to get some hard sparring rounds when you're an amateur and you're learning how to develop these skills. But now at this point, I mean, I've been fighting for almost 10 years. I've had, this is my 29th fight. Uh, I try not to uh, throw down in the gym anymore. You know, I'm training smarter than ever, and hopefully that helps to prolong my career and, and make sure that I can fight, right? Because right. we only get paid when we show up in there. So if I'm constantly getting injured in practice when I'm not getting paid, that's not going to help me out. And also talk about fighter pay. I mean, there's been a lot of concern that fighters are being used by the promotions. Uh, from your perspective, man, I know you said you have an educational background, you know, you're educated, you could do anything else. This is, you're doing this because of your passion, but also financially, how do you feel like uh, fighters can have a voice to make sure to get what's, you know, what's proper? Uh, I think the best thing we can do is get in there and get our finishes and, mm -hmm. and get more eyes on the sport. You know, some people love him or hate him, the Conor McGregor thing, or, or even Sage Northcutt, you know. Uh, I plan on going in there and exposing the fact that I'm a much better fighter than he is, but he's getting paid way more than me because he's getting eyes on the sport. You know, from running a promotion in Milwaukee, I understand the business side of things. And so uh, whatever we can go, do to uh, give that threat of violence to the fans and uh, get them excited about watching our fights um, is going to going to help us get paid more. 
And you've been trained out at the MMA lab, John Crouch, head coach there, and also Ben Henderson, you're working specifically with him. Talk about that. Yeah, as we were growing the gym, I, uh, I would travel the train a little bit to pick up techniques and, you know, always trying to learn and stuff. And I, I really felt at the lab like it was a, a home away from home for me. Um, I, I really get along great with Coach Crouch. He's been a great mentor for, for me. And um, I do try to make it down there several times a year. A couple times a year, uh, the last several years, I've been making trips down there. And talk about the great talent you got here, here at Vienna BJ today. How about all the different fighters that you've got coming up? Yeah, not only fighters, not only fighters, but we brought on some amazing coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago, we brought on Solo Acosta, who's a great striking coach, and uh, recently Ben Tomes, who's a great wrestling coach. Um, and they they really uh, are experts in their discipline, but also adapting it to MMA. And so it's really helped grow the team. We've had not only our own fighters getting wins that get them bigger and bigger fights but we've had other people that have moved to milwaukee just to train with us and it's just kind of getting that snowball effect going now uh, we've had a lot of big fights so far this summer tim Hiley fought for lfa and won uh, montel jackson fought for contender series and had a devastating finish so now we have a couple more big fights this summer and we're going to finish strong and stay undefeated Roughly, and the Tuesday Night Contender Series, all your fighters are going to be featured on there. Talk about how great of a platform that is. Yeah, it's a great platform. Really cool, different experience. Uh, it's very small and intimate and quiet, and you got the big wigs sitting over there at the table watching right there. And uh, it's a great opportunity for these kids and adults, obviously, to, uh, to get exposed, get paid pretty decent compared to what they maybe would fighting a prospect like this on the regional level and uh, get them in the UFC with a little bit more exposure than just coming up through the, the regional ranks. Now I want to talk about UFC 225. We saw Kobe Covington win. What do you think of that fight? Uh, yeah, he's got some unbelievable cardio, that's for sure. Dos Anjos is a great fighter, uh, just kind of outgrinded and just kept coming forward. I'd like to see, uh, I wish Dos Anjos would have came forward himself more. He did finally, and uh, I was saying it right off the bat, you know, he was backing up too much and allowing himself to get grounded and uh, pushed up against the fence. Right away in the fourth round, he came out and actually came forward and took Kobe down. And I was like, that's what you need to do against the guy that keeps pressuring. And then he went away from it. And then sure enough, you know, he lost the decision. So um, there's ways to beat everybody in the sport. Kobe's a, a good grinder, but he's definitely has some holes in his game. When he fights Woodley, what do you think is gonna happen? Uh, I actually think uh, Kobe in that matchup is the favorite. Um, we'll be we'll be curious to know if uh, Tyrone Woodley still has that power in that right hand after the surgery on that shoulder, and he is getting in his mid to late thirties. Uh, he does rely a lot on his explosiveness, and, and that is usually one of the first things to go uh, as you get older. So um, Kobe brings that relentless pace, and I don't know if Tyrone has the cardio to keep up with that. That'll be an interesting fight. You know, talk about the fact that you don't like to talk trash and you approach it from a scientific standpoint like, hey, if I beat this guy and he's ranked it this way, I'm going to be ranked ahead of him. Now we see a lot of the rankings, they don't matter anymore. So how do you approach this now? I just want to keep winning fights and getting paid, finishing people in devastating ways. I think it's about time for me to get a bonus and uh, I'll take it from there. If I can, you know, win this fight, uh, get a finish, win my next fight, go into my third contract uh, on a three-fight win streak. Pretty happy about that. We'll keep it going, knock into the top 15, and just keep climbing. Well, Zach, best of luck to you. Uh, what can the fans expect when we fight Save North Cup July 14th? Uh, I'm going to come forward. I'm going to be relentless. I'm going to put a pace on him that he can't deal with. Uh, my last fight, we were coming out to break his body. This fight, I'm coming out to break him mentally. So I'm going to make him fold, and uh, he's going to be looking for a way out. He's going to give it to me, and I'm going to take it.